the Senate will now consider the proposal from Senator Dunningham, which is also shown at item 12 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? The proposal is supported. Senator Dunningham. Yes. I move the motion. And, uh, Acting Deputy President, this is an extremely important matter, not just for uh, those of us from the state of Tasmania, but for all Australians who have an interest in the environment and foreign affairs and our place in this world. As a leader, when it comes to Antarctic science, the preservation and protection of the frozen continent, we are revered globally as a leader when it comes to Antarctica. And I acknowledge my good friend and colleague Tasmanian Senator Carol Brown for her support on many matters. And I'm hoping today we can hear the Australian government echo my concerns around what's happening to the Australian Antarctic Division and other ta great Tasmanians like Senator Lambie and Senator Tyrrell, Senator Wishfielson and Senator Chandler all share this concern. And the, the reality is in Tasmania we have a proud history of being the home of Antarctic science. We're home to the CSIRO. We're home to the Institute of Marine and Antarctic Science, and we're also home to the Australian Antarctic Division, and have been for some time. And generally speaking, Acting Deputy President, uh, the support for that sector is what I would call multi-partisan. There has been no voice absent in support of our strong Ant Antarctic science sector, and that's for good reason. And additionally, as well, I think it's uh, important to point out that we're home to Camelot. The international treaty organisation that is uh, entrusted with the management and guidance of policies related to the Antarctic, um, and in Hobart those headquarters are, are located. But in recent times there have been some troubling developments which concern me and many other Tasmanians greatly, and they are of course a reduction in the uh, amount of funding available to the Australian Antarctic Division for them to do their vital work. For them to be able to manage their scientific program, which uh, rolls out over a number of years, many of these projects that they run are multi-year projects. And this reduction of funding, $25 million, is not an insignificant amount. $25 million for a very important entity that does world-leading work being taken away by the Australian Labor government. Now, we are seen as a leader. All of our treaty partners, all the members of Camelot, watch what we do with great interest. Uh, when we invest, they hail it as a wonderful achievement and something that other countries should follow suit in. But when we cut, of course, they look aghast at what exactly the Australian gov uh, government is up to and what they're doing as a leader in this space. And of course, we don't really even have to mention it, but the, you know, as a leader in this space, and there's a lot of interest, uh, Acting Deputy President, in uh, what happens in Antarctica, particularly from countries that don't necessarily share our interests, our democratic values, our um, views of how best to manage natural resources. And that is what we need to be vigilant of. It was distressing to hear, of course, the denial from both the Minister for the Environment and, of course, the Leader of the Government in this place uh, of there being any cuts. Denials in the face of two emails from the Director of the Antarctic Division saying that there will be job losses, not all jobs will be safe. Denials in the face of uh, concerns, serious concerns being expressed by uh, Mr Zach Batchelor from the CPSU, who has a very good handle of what's happening there at the AAD. And denials in the face of multiple concerns expressed by academics whose work is on the line. We know that there are jobs going. We know that there are vacancies not going to be filled. And we know that that is sending a terrible message to our treaty partners and jeopardising our position as a leader in Antarctic science. It also does, of course, draw into question the Australian government's commitment to the Antarctic science precinct, something that I, again, thought had multi-partisan support, co-locating these scientific entities down on the Hobart waterfront near where the Noyena, the new billion-dollar-plus icebreaker, will be birthing. All of this is now in question because the commitment by the Australian government has suddenly started to be watered down. That multi-partisan support, non-political nature of Antarctic science, much in the same way we generally view foreign affairs and defence, 
has suddenly started to fritter away, and I'm very concerned. So I'm looking forward to Australian Labor um, speakers in this debate. Their contributions, I hope, will clearly outline exactly what I've been calling for, that the Australian Labor Party politicians from Tasmania will be forcing the Australian Labor government to reverse these cuts and restore well, multipartisan support for this area. Senator Brown. Uh, thank you, uh, President. And, um, I'm really pleased to be able to stand up here and uh, allay the concern that Senator Dunningham says that he has over um, the funding of the Australian Antarctic Division, because it has been put to me um, that this is just this MPI is just a, a stunt by the Liberals, looking for a headline without thinking of the workers that they may be worrying. So I, I'm. Glad to be standing up here. Glad to be standing up here, to say that there have been no cuts to the $804 million budget for the Antarctic Division. Not a cent. So now I've alleviated the concerns of Sen Senator Dunia. There will be no job cuts. No job cuts. Well, I've spoken to the uh, CPSU, Senator uh, Chandler, but there are no job cuts. Uh, in fact, more people will gain full-time employment. So I, I can hear the cheers from the other side. Simply, um, what happened here is that there was significant um, funding for the commissioning of the world-class Antarctic science ship. This money, dedicated to the Nuina, has been spent, and I'm sure Senator Dunningham has seen the ship docked in Hobart. And Tasmanians know that the sad truth is that under the former coalition government, the Ant Australia's Antarctic program was irresponsibly managed. And as a result, since the election of the Albanese uh, government, we've had two separate inquiries into the program in less than a year, both of which were into cultural, cultural issues occurring within the division. Now, this government's priority, I'm glad to let um, Senator Dunningham and all those that are uh, interested uh, in this MPI and, and the Antarctic Division, the government's priority when it uh, comes to the Antarctic Division comes down to two things. One, supporting critical science, and two, supporting permanent good jobs in Tasmania. Labor has always valued and properly funded scientific research, and in particular to this matter of public importance, Antarctic research. And since the election of Bob Hawke, Australia has been a global leader on, on the Antarctic, ensuring that all Antarctic activities remain consistent with the principles of peace, science and environmental protection. Our world-leading scient uh, scientific work in the Antarctic enables us to better understand the world around us and has provided us insights into climate science so that we so that can be gleaned nowhere which can be gleaned nowhere else the government has been has given clear assurances and i give them again today clear assurances um, by the um, that there are no cuts to the 804 million dollar budget for the antarctic division and the government has also been given assurances by the australian antarctic Division that there is no plan for redundancies. In fact, a number of contractors are being transitioned into secure, permanent jobs that, and that the critical world-leading science will continue. The work is essential work, and while the Liberals and Nationals are still over there on the opposition benches unable to reach a unanimous decision that climate change is real, the government is getting on with the job. So I hope so far uh, Senator Dunningham is uh, uh, his concern has been alleviated. If the former government, if the former government was still in power, the Australian Antarctic Division would be millions of dollars worse off, having faced a reduction in funding in the year 22-23. That 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 is information from the former government's own budget papers. Budget papers which see a funding cut of $33 million from the years 2021-22 to 22-23. The budget papers which give 
black and white evidence that under our government funding over the coming years is higher than every year under the coalition's last budget. Further, in 2022-23, the Australian government spent over $32 million delivering Antarctic science, which is a $3 million increase to the year prior. The Liberals spent nine years in government undermining Australian scientific research capacity, all to avoid the inconvenient truth that the planet Order. is warm. Your time warming. has expired. Senator Wish Wilson. Thank you. Uh, Acting Deputy President, I think those workers and scientists of the Australian Antarctic Division watching this today uh, would just be hoping that we could put the politics aside just for a minute on something this important. Um, Senator Brown says there's been no budget cuts or the government hasn't implemented any budget cuts, and that's true. But what Senator Brown and the government know is that the Antarctic Division is having to find $25 million in budget savings because $25 million has gone missing from their budget. I have seen the internal email from the CEO saying they have to cut their operating budget, cut their operating budget by 16 per cent in every division to find these savings. So a little bit cute with the language, but can we just focus on what the workers and scientists are facing? Secondly, the government says it is committed to funding critical science programs. But underline that word critical. We also know from that division that a number of science programs, potentially many dozens of them, are being cancelled because somehow under this new regime they're not being considered critical. Go tell that to an early career scientist, a young woman who's been waiting for her turn to get down there on the ice in the very brief six-week window they have this summer to conduct a program she's probably working with scientists all around the world on. No, nope. binned, canned because we've got to find $25 million. We will get to the bottom of what happened, whether it was mismanagement or whatever it was, but we know the reality is the Antarctic Division is having to cut its budget, including its operating budget. And If we support science and we prioritise science, surely we can find the $25 million to make sure that all these scientists can actually have the funding they need to do the work at one of the most critical times, may I say also, in human history. There was an excellent Guardian article in The Guardian today, in the International Guardian. Is the climate crisis finally catching up with the Antarctica? Finding the answer has never been more pressing. This is talking about mapping the seafloor around Antarctica. Do you know we've only mapped 12 per cent of our Antarctic territory? Until we do that, we can't actually estimate the impacts of sea ice melting will have on sea level rise. Apparently, and I've seen the spreadsheet, that is one of the programs that's been canned, Senator Brown, mapping the seafloor off Antarctica. This is critical. And we come in here and play politics and use semantics, or what is commonly called spin, to try and avoid responsibility. Can we please all work together on getting a solution for the Australian Antarctic Division so they have funding certainty they can hire more people, including many young women who have been waiting in that uh, boys' club down there to have their turn to actually do their science programs. Senator Chandler. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Australia has a proud history of long-standing scientific research in Antarctica, and Tasmania has a proud history as Australia's gateway to the frozen continent. But all of this is now under threat because of this Labor government's proposed cuts to the Australian Antarctic Division. News of this proposed $25 million cut appears to have come completely out of the blue and we know is having a devastating impact on the morale of people who work at the Australian Antarctic Division and will have a potentially devastating impact on their operations if this cut comes to fruition. A cut of $25 million represents almost 16 per cent of the Australian Antarctic Division's operational budget. And like I said, this has come to as a real shock to uh, not only the people who work at the Australian Antarctic Division, the AAD, but also the broader Tasmanian community, particularly uh, in the south of the state near the AAD's headquarters in Kingston. In fact, Labor never once mentioned or alluded to any cuts to the AAD during uh, in the lead up, I should say, to last year's election. And I think um, the potential of this $25 million cut really does bring into question 
Labor's commitment, this government's commitment to scientific research and our country's caretaking responsibilities in Antarctica. Australia's Antarctic Territory spans 42 per cent of the continent, and with custodianship of such a substantial territory and a very long historic connection um, dating back to the expedition of Sir Douglas Mawson, Australia has taken on a significant leadership role in Australia. Um, and as a, an Australian, I'm very proud of that, and as a Tasmanian, I'm very proud of that, because Tasmania certainly plays its part in this regard. We have set the example of responsible custodianship and sensitive scientific research in Antarctica, and we know that this place needs to be treated with care, and we need to ensure we protect and preserve the ice continent into the future. Any cut to our resourcing of the Australian Antarctic Division lessens our role and our obligation to Antarctica. As one of the 12 original signatories of the Antarctic Treaty in 1959, we cannot afford to minimise our responsibilities to Antarctica, especially when concerns have been raised about the intentions of other nations to exploit Antarctica for natural resources. Maintaining a presence on the continent to ensure that Antarctica is protected from any such exploitative activity is essential. And with Labor's proposed cuts to Antarctic funding, one has to ask the question, is this now under threat? In highlighting Tasmania's important role as the gateway to Antarctica, I think it's also important for the Chamber to understand the depth of the island state's involvement in Australia's broader Antarctic activities. Uh, in Hobart, we are used to seeing icebreakers berthed on our waterfront. The Orange Hulk that was the Aurora Australis was always a prominent site at the docks, transferring essential equipment and supplies, as well as intrepid expeditioners to and from the icy continent. And of course, we now have the new icebreaker in Hobart as well. The AAD is headquartered and operated out of its current location in Kingston, which I said earlier is in the south of the state. And it makes sense for our foremost agency responsible for our Antarctic operations to be based in the state with the closest proximity to Antarctica. And the AAD's presence in Tasmania, coupled with our proximity to the continents, has seen the island state become a hub of Antarctic scientific research. Uh, Tasmania is also home to some of our nation's foremost manufacturers of Antarctic equipment. Elphinstone, based in Tribunna on the east coast, has been designing and manufacturing Antarctic equipment since 1985. The company manufactures a wide variety of sleds and other equipment used in Australia's Antarctic operations. And I've been fortunate enough to um, tour Elphinstone and, and see firsthand the exceptional work to design and build equipment that needs to withstand the harsh Antarctic conditions. Uh, this business is an absolute testament to Tasmanian ingenuity and expertise when it comes to the Antarctic. So what does this government's proposed cuts to the AOD mean for companies like Elphinstone, which provide services and equipment? to support the AAD's ongoing mission in Antarctica. I would be very interested to know. So in conclusion, Mr Acting Deputy President, Tasmania is well and truly ingrained in Australia's Antarctic story, and it makes it even more astounding that the Labor government would even entertain a budget cut which will only reduce Australia and Tasmania's Antarctic involvement. News of the proposed $25 million cut has caused much unease and anxiety among Australia's Antarctic community and particularly in southern Tasmania. It is time for this government to guarantee that Tasmania will continue to be our Antarctic Gateway. Senator Lambie. Uh, thank you, Acting Deputy President. The government needs to come clean on the missing $25 million from the Australian Antarctic Vision in Hobart. Taking any money out of this very important agency is, well, I haven't even got any words for it, it's just ridiculous. And not only does it threaten jobs and very important science that happens, that happens there, but let's talk about national security, shall we? Here you go, listen to this, Tasmanians. China's on our tail. Here it comes. It sends a clear message to China that we are taking the government, the government so big on national security, is taking us off the ball already. China has permanently occupied Antarctic stations and it's currently building a new one in the Ross Sea region. Experts say this new one will have satellite ground station, which will mean the Chinese Communist Party can hack into the satellite communications of other countries. Don't worry, Tazzy, we're closest. And the red team is cutting funding from our Antarctic division. Serious, it reminds me of blue team when at least the port of Darwin to China. So come on, red team, come clean and tell us what's going on with this funding, because we want to know. Senator Grogan. Thank you, Acting Deputy Chair, uh, President. Sorry. Um, listening to those opposite speaking on this MPI is quite spectacular. They're 
dedication over the last 20 minutes to science compared to their lack of any form of dedication or commitment to science over the last nine years when they were in government. This is just a stunt. Their history will tell us that there is, they have no credibility in this space. They undermined any form of climate action, questioned the science every single time, questioned the science, repealed the climate policies that were in place, joked about our Pacific Island neighbours going underwater as if that's funny, sabotaged the Murray-Darling Basin Plan, hid the State of the Environment report, refused to act on the critical Samuels review, tried 20 diff 22 different energy policies, failed. Nothing. Nada. Nothing happening there at all. Voted against the safeguard mechanism, etc., etc. I could go on. So just to be clear, echoing the words of Senator Brown, there are no cuts to the Antarctic Division. The fact is the budget is going up every year for the next three years. We are working very hard to clean up the mess left behind by the Liberals, by the coalition government that over a lengthy, painful nine years put the Antarctic program into a whole way of distress that was so badly managed. Our priority, the Albanese Labor government's priority, is to support critical science, to support permanent jobs, especially in Tasmania. Australia has been a global leader in the Antarctic, ensuring that all Antarctic activities remain consistent with the principles of peace, science and environmental protection is where we are at. The sad truth is that the program previously was irresponsibly managed, and that leaves our program of critical science at risk. Our scientists are doing terrific research. The Denman Glacier, the Million Year Ice Core, the ice cap, greenhouse gases in the southern atmosphere, and so much more. This is essential work and it's essential work that is based out of Tasmania. While the coalition, the Liberals and the Nationals on those benches opposite, were in government, they were unable to reach any form of unanimous decision that climate change is real. And yet such a significant amount of the research that we have going on in the Antarctic is about just that, because we are seeing warming. And that has a profound impact in the Antarctic. The minister has been given clear assurances by the Australian Antarctic Division that there is no plan for redundancies. That is, a number of contractors are going to be transitioning into secure, permanent jobs and that the critical science is going to continue. And Senator Brown has already said in this debate that she has spoken to the CPSU and has confirmed some of these issues. And just to be clear, in 2022-23, we spent over 22, 32 million delivering Antarctic science, which was an increase, an increase from the 2021-22 year. The last season, um, in the Antarctica sent some amazing groundwork for the programs that are going to be delivered uh, into the next few years. And we will see this season a couple of really, really critical pieces of work. Um, some critical work at the Bunga Hills and also the, um, the 2.8 kilometre drill down to collect ice cores that are more than a million years old so that those Antarctic scientists can test those tiny little air bubbles that are trapped in the ice so that their studies can continue and we can learn more and develop more in terms of where we're at, in terms of what's happening in the Antarctic. Our Antarctic division does incredible work and Australia has long played a critical leadership role in the Antarctic and that will continue. Nothing is going to stop. Thank you, Senator Grogan. Senator Roberts. Thank you. 
Labor must not cut the budget supporting our presence in the Australian Antarctic Territory. We must support our presence through enhanced research and enhanced infrastructure. Do not do so opens the gate to other nations' claims over a part of our territory. Australia, as one of the original Antarctic Treaty signatories, lays claim to the largest portion of the Antarctic continent, based on Australia's significant role in the early days of Antarctic exploration and Australia's proximity to the continent. China already has four bases within our Australian Antarctic Territory for research, mapping, communication and resources, all vital to China. Based on China's investment and activity, when the treaty is up for reconsideration in 2048, China will lay claim to Australia's portion of Antarctica. When we cut the budget, our future claims will not be treated seriously if we do not treat our own claims seriously now. This is a matter of security and productive capacity and human progress. One Nation will always put Australia's interests first. Thank you, Senator Roberts. Senator Fawcett. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Uh, I'm in a minority here. I'm not one of the many Tasmanian speakers who has addressed this issue, but uh, I also rise to speak with some concern about maintaining an appropriate focus and investment and, importantly, a clear statement of intent in terms of our investment in Antarctic endeavours. Many others have spoken during this debate about the science, and so I'm not going to go to the science, uh, but I do want to highlight the importance of the Antarctic Treaty System in terms of keeping the Antarctic region and its oceans free from militarisation and exploitation of resources, things which are critical to Australia's national security, as well as to the fish stocks and other mammals that feed on those fish uh, in the southern oceans. Now, for the Labor Party and the members here to claim there is no cuts, if they wish to use that terminology, that's fine. But we know from the emails from the leadership of the Australian Antarctic Division that they are having to do with $25 million less. So don't call it a cut if you prefer not to, but the division has $25 million less to pursue its programs. And that reminds me of the precedent we've seen in areas affecting national security with the defence budget this year where there was a lot of discussion about the urgency, the agreement of the Defence Strategic Update of 2020, and yet when independent observers such as ASPE, uh, the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, who have long done well-respected independent analyses of the defence budget, looked at the papers, they said that there has actually been a $1.5 billion cut over the next three years in the defence budget. And so the government, the Labor government, can say one thing, but when independent experts, whether it be the head of the AAD or ASPE, look at their budgeting and say that the agency's concern have less money to do their job with, and in defence's case it's because of the inflationary pressures around the cost of operating defence continue to go up, and so in real terms the ASPE assessment is correct in that they actually have $1.5 billion less to do the vital job of protecting Australia's national interests. So the significance of the investment and the work in the Antarctic is because when the treaty is up for renegotiation, the whole treaty system, uh, of which Australia is a founding member and a major player with a claim of 42 per cent over the Antarctic continent, the amount of investment and activity on the continent is actually a critical factor in determining the validity and strength of those claims. And that's why the Australian Antarctic Strategy, and in fact the 20-year action plan, which was released incidentally last year in 2022, actually calls to expand the logistical capabilities and critical research in the Antarctic ice sheet, to lead new research and to improve our understanding, to fund new capabilities and infrastructure, as well as to continue working closely with other Antarctic nations through the Antarctic Treaty system. And so if the head of the Australian Antarctic Division is flagging the fact that there is $25 million less, then clearly those objectives are not actually met. Now, contrary 
to the assertions of those opposite, under the former government, there was some $800 million uh, provided over 10 years to strengthen scientific and strategic capabilities for Antarctic work. And so some of those measures included $136 million to support Australia's inland traverse capability, uh, critical charting activities, mobile stations, as well as other core activities of the division. There was $109 million to increase aerial and inland capabilities. There was $44 million for additional shipping to support the RSV Nuinya to focus on extended science, uh, as well as, as part of that inland capability, $35 million for medium lift helicopters, which is a former professional helicopter pilot, I think is a wonderful investment. But it highlights the fact that the coalition put its money where its mouth was. It invested in those enabling capabilities that secures our long-term position in the international community in this critical continent. Thank you, Senator Fawcett. The time for this discussion has expired.